Now in this part of the question then, what I've got is a sketch of the diagram and we need to first of all mark the forces on. Now the first thing though is we've got this x newtons pushing in. So what I'm going to do is, I must admit I don't like having forces that come into an object, I prefer them to go out of an object. So in other words, that x newtons I would mark as coming out of the object like this, x newtons. And I would remove that one coming in like that. Okay? Why do that? I just think it's easier to do when it comes to resolving. So next I'm going to put on the weight of the particle, that's mg, 0.8g in this case, and that's going to be in newtons. We've also got the contact force. Now this contact force is not going to be the same contact force as we had in the previous part, even though I'm writing it as r. So it's r newtons now. Why isn't it going to be the same? That's because we're pushing into the plane here. So that's going to increase the contact force r compared to what it was before. Now when we push in with a force of x newtons, this particle wants to move up the plane, we're told. So in other words, there's going to be friction that's going to oppose that and it's going to act downwards. And we're also told that it's just on the point of moving. So friction will have reached its maximum value, its limiting value. And we should know that that is always equal to mu r newtons. Now from the first part of the question we worked out that the coefficient of friction, which will not change in this problem, the coefficient of friction was 0 0.5066 and so on. So bear that in mind, we're going to need that later on. Also I would encourage you to put some dotted lines in, one that way and to follow this R through here, one down there. Put the angle in here as being 30 degrees and also mark this angle as being 30 degrees. It corresponds, if you like, to this angle down here. Next, in order to work out what x is, what I'm going to essentially do is resolve in two directions, perpendicular to the plane and parallel to the plane. I need to establish what r is. So if we resolve perpendicular to the plane, taking outwards as positive, okay, going round our forces, we've got R acting outwards. Mu R here is perpendicular to this direction, so that won't feature in our equation. If we look at the weight now, we've got just one component of the weight that acts in that direction. The other component of the weight acts in that direction. So we need this component of the weight. So we've got this angle in here. So it's going to be 0.8g cos 30 because the angle is included between the force and the direction we want to resolve in. 0.8g cos 30. It acts in the opposing direction. So it'd be minus 0.8g cosine 30 degrees. Moving on to the force of x newtons, that can be split into two components, one in that direction and one in this direction. We only want the one in this direction and so looking that we've got a 30 degrees here between this right angle here and the force we can see that this angle here is blank, so this will be x sine 30. Okay, It excludes the 30, so it's x sine 30. So that would be minus x sine 30 degrees. That would be the component of the force then from x that acts in this direction into the plane. 
This is the resultant force then acting on the particle. It's in equilibrium, so that resultant force must equal zero. So we can rearrange this equation to make R the subject. And if we do that by adding these two terms to both sides, we get R equals 0.8G cos 30 plus X sine 30. OK, so we've got that value. Let's label that one. We'll need to come back to that equation later on. Next, we're going to resolve parallel to the plane. So what I'm going to do is resolve in the direction of up the plane, up the plane being positive. So resolving up the plane, what I've got now is the component of x that acts up the plane in this direction of the dotted line. Well that contains the angle so it's going to be x cosine 30. So we've got x cosine 30 degrees. Then we've got r, but r is perpendicular to the plane, so that won't come into this equation. Moving round to mu r now, all of mu r acts parallel to the plane, but down in the opposite direction to this, so it's going to be minus mu r. So minus mu times r. And then we move on to the weight. And the weight can be split into two components, one in this direction and one down the plane. We're not interested in the one down here, but the component down the plane. So we've got an empty angle here, but yet we've got the 30 degrees here. So we can think of this as 0.8g sine 30 for that component down the plane. So that would be minus 0.8g sine 30 degrees. This is the resultant force now acting on the particle parallel to the plane. But the particle doesn't move, so it's going to equal 0 no overall resultant force. Now, all we need to do is substitute, let's call this equation 2, substitute for r in here. We've got mu as well as being 0 0.5066, put that in here, and we can then solve this for x. Well, that's the theory. All we've got to do now is just put it in to practice. So let's start off by subbing 1 into equation 2. And if we do that, what we have got is x cos 30 degrees minus mu. We know mu is 0 0.5066, so 5066 and so on. Let's put that in brackets. It's multiplied by r. r is this value up here, so that's 0.8g cos 30. And we've got plus x sine 30. So that's minus mu r, that's that term. Now we've just got this term to write in, minus 0.8g sine 30 and that equals zero. There's lots of ways you could go from here. What I'm going to do though is just write down what cos sine of 30 is. That's 0.866 naught and so on. So we've got 0 0.866 naught and so on. Lots of x. Then for this one, I'm going to expand this bracket, multiply 0 0.5066 with 0.8g cos 30. If you do that on a calculator, what you get is minus 3.44. Then I'm going to do minus 0 0.5066 multiplied by plus x sine 30. So that's going to be a minus number, and it turns to, out to be 0 0.2533 and so on. And that's x. Then we've got this term on the end, which if you do that on your calculator, taking g to be 9.8, it 
you end up with minus 3.92 and that equals 0. Group the x terms together and group these two constants together and what you should find you get is 0.6126 and so on x and if you subtract those two from one another you end up with minus 7.36 and that equals 0. So if we add 7.36 to both sides and divide by 0.6126 and so on we'll get the value of x. So x is equal to 7.36 all divided by 0.6126 and so on. And If you work that out what you should find you get is 12.012 and so on. And if we round this up to say three significant figures you've got 12.0 newtons to three significant figures. 3SF then for short. Okay, so quite a lengthy problem there, but hopefully you've been able to follow that. And that brings us now to the end of this question.